This ancient story coming from the ancient and prehistoric world has dominated all the cultures of the world. But what that implies, I believe, is there's going to be some kind of a mutation of the human race in order to take the human family on the earth to a new, a new style of life in the universe. And so what will be lost will be your humanity, your, your, uh, your ability to show love and kindness to other people. There will be no room for that. Emotions, uh, there will be no room for emotions. There will be no room for uh, the, the American system of freedom, liberty, and justice for all. That's gone, that's out. There will be no more freedom, liberty, and justice for all. No more family love, no more uh, humanity, you know, man's, man reacting to man. No, all of that's going to be gone. Um, aren't, aren't you also saying, though, that there is a race of humans being actually, that this isn't going to start in the future, that it's already started? Oh, that yeah, it's already started. The genetic modification of the human actually behind the scenes. Yes. Doesn't you know, in the book that? of Genesis, in the Bible, the Old Testament in Genesis 18, the cha 18th chapter, I did a video on this. It talks about Abraham and uh, Sarah and, um, and the prophet Abraham, and it says that three men, in Genesis 18, go back and read it yourself, says that three men come walking up into the camp. Abraham went out and greeted the three men. And, and asked them to stay for dinner, and they said no. They were on their way to other business and did not have time to stop. And it says that Abraham insisted that they stay at least to have something to eat, and then they could go. And they agreed. So they said, all right, make it quick, and we'll stay for something. And so the Bible says in Genesis 18 uh, that Sarah, his wife, fixed dinner for them. They sat under a tree, had dinner with, with Abraham, and then it says, after dinner, two of the men got up and left to go on about their business, but the one that stayed was the absolute creator God, the one who had created the human creature. He sat with, uh, uh, with Abraham having dinner under the tree, and then uh, gave prophecies to Abraham, and then got up and left. Now, that's in Genesis 18. First of all, my question is, wait a minute. It says there were three men, and the three men came up and had dinner with, with Abraham. And then in Genesis 19, the following chapter, it says that those two men who had gotten up earlier and left were the two angels that went into Sodom and Gomorrah. And it says that when these two angels, or men, went into Sodom and Gomorrah, the homosexuals saw these guys, these two men, and thought that they were absolutely handsome beautiful, good-looking men, and, and they were attracted to the homosexuals. We'll go read it in gender, Genesis uh, 19. But that tells me, if these were, if those were the same two men that were with Abraham having dinner, the scripture says they were absolutely handsome, good-looking, handsome men. And God, the creator, is still sitting under the tree with Abraham having dinner. And it says God in, the, uh, in all capital letters. The creator of the human race is there with Abraham. So I'm just saying that I'm, I'm sure that there are spiritual interpretations of all this, but I think there is a legitimacy about the story that when we read in Genesis where God walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening, the word in Hebrew, walk with, uh, God walked with Adam, that Hebrew word means... Uh, you can hear a footstep, stepping on leaves, stepping. You can hear the footsteps. That's what the Hebrew word means. So it, when uh, you know, we poetically say, well, God probably was with Adam and Eve spiritually. No, no. The word in Hebrew says God walked with Adam. You could hear his footsteps on the leaves. All of this implies in the Old Testament that the, whoever created us looked like us. They, and that's why the, the scripture says, God says, come let us make man in our image after our likeness. That's in Genesis 1. Um, Genesis 1 and 2, both. 
I talked with, many years ago, I talked with Rabbi Marvin Antoman. Rabbi Marvin Antoman from uh, Massachusetts was a dear friend of mine. I think he's still alive today in, in the Knesset in Israel. But he and I used to talk long hours. And, uh, and I asked him once about that scripture, come let us make man in our image after our likeness. And he said, both Jews and Christians misunderstand that scripture because they, they gloss over it too quickly. Most people think that when they read that scripture that God is saying, come let us make a creature and we will call him man. Well, first of all, you've got to ask, what, who is God talking to himself? He's saying, come let us. Who's us? So he said, come let us make man in our image after our likeness. No. He said, no, that's not the way to translate it correctly. He's saying, the, the correct understanding is God is saying to someone, come let us make man in our image after our likeness. Not make man. No, no. Man's already here. But come let us reform, mutate man. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And then later on in Genesis, it says man has now become as one of us. Now he looks like us. So if that is true, then that means today, and I am totally convinced that this is, this is the case, we have entities here from somewhere else, angels, gods, whatever you want to call them, Zechariah Sitchin calls them Anunnaki, but I am totally convinced of my own self that there are alien life forms here who look like humans. And, and yet they're not fully human. And uh, of course in Genesis we're told that uh, this, there's a world of difference. We understand in the book of Genesis a world of difference between an angel and a sons of God. Sons of God are not angels, and angels are not sons of God. Totally different concepts, totally different words. Sons of God are spirit entities, are entities from somewhere who look and have physical bodies and look like human. They're called sons of God, while angels are spirit entities. So we're told in the Bible, again going back to Genesis, that the sons of God uh, were messing around with women and got them pregnant. Well, I got to figure that these sons of God, their plumbing worked the same way, so therefore they could get women pregnant. And I, can, I cannot imagine a woman being talked into bed by some hideous creature from another world, but I can see it if it's a handsome, good-looking man. Well, that's what the Bible said. They, even the homosexuals said they were beautiful, handsome men. Okay, so... So I'm, uh, the, all of this I'm bringing out as biblical reference for my conclusion that I think Zachariah Sitchin is right. I think other people who have written about the same subject are right. That there are, in fact, entities here, uh, life forms here, that have come here from somewhere else, and maybe they were the originals. And, and, and they are today, in my humble opinion, the people who are running this planet. Okay, it would not surprise me a bit. Are these the Nephilim? I don't know if they, they could be the Nephilim because not all the Nephilim died at the flood. Uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of Christians will tell you, oh yeah, all the Nephilim died in the flood. No, that's not what the Bible says. It says that there was one of the Nephilim uh, lived through the flood. His name was Og Abasham, O-G. Og Abasham was one of the Nephilim and he lived through the flood and could reproduce and, and reproduce more like himself. We know that there have been skeletons found in, in way down in the earth around the world that are far bigger than we humans are today. Some of them are 16 feet long, some of them are 20 feet long, 12 feet long. So I'm sure that there have been uh, extraterrestrial, for lack of a better term, extraterrestrial life forms who have come here who we look like them. They don't look like us. They they created us in their image and likeness.